Ethan was two and a half years old when he was diagnosed with autism, and it was a devastating time in our life. At the time he was diagnosed, Ethan didn't know that I was mama or that um, Bubba was daddy. He couldn't say anything. He barely said sounds. He was not potty trained, and if you took him anywhere, he pretty much cried and screamed. I liked to equate Ethan to a wild animal. I know that's an awful thing to say about your child, but that's pretty much how he was at that time. Through years of ABA therapy, I am glad to say that Ethan now knows that I'm his mama. He knows that he has a daddy and two sisters. He can read. He talks. He still doesn't speak as well as an average kid, but for us, it's a miracle because we know what he wants to eat. We know where he wants to go, and we know what he wants. He wants to go swimming, or he wants to skip school. Whatever he wants to do, he lets us know. So for us, from where he was when he was two and a half to where he is today at eight and a half, I never would have thought he could make those strides. So for us, he, his strides has made our family life dramatically different and better. In order to help Ethan with his difficulties, uh, we began a search for resources and tools that were out there. And like all the other families that have autistic children, we went through the usual uh, channels. We went to the local school boards. We went to local health care providers, local government agencies, looking for something and some way to, to help our son. And what we were alarmed to find out was that there really wasn't anything that addressed his specific needs. Ethan was, was covered up by uh, a, a massive way of, of dealing with this that really was more of a um, corporate approach as opposed to an individual approach that, that factored in his needs and dealt with, with what he, his uh, specific situation was. And because of that, we were, uh, as we said, forced to look around and we, we met a man, Dr. Craig Thomas in Jackson, uh, Mississippi, who helped us to establish a, a home-based program that was tailored to Ethan's specific needs. And we recruited in local college students to help with his therapy and this, they worked in the home for 40 to 50 hours a week. And Ethan did amazingly well in this time. It was a, during this time, as, as Allison referenced, that he no longer began to act as a wild animal. He began to sit at the table. He would, he would sit and, and uh, have dinner with us. And we would see all of these other things. He became potty trained. All of these things that, that most families take for granted that were amazing struggles in our, in our home, we began to see progress. But we reached a point where it was time for Ethan to, to sort of move out of that environment and we wanted to find a school for him. And again, there weren't, weren't any uh, that really met his needs. We looked around again and we, we met with several to see what, what the options were, but there wasn't anything we really felt would address his needs. So we were introduced to Pastor Duran uh, with Shreveport Community Church and, and we just expressed to him what our situation was. And, it was really Denny's vision to create a school to take a, a program that had helped an individual child up to that point to begin to reach so many more. And our vision today has expanded far beyond what we ever would have envisioned um, when we started down this journey and that we were focused on a single child and now we're focused on many more. And we want to see the same progress for, our, the, for all these other children that we've seen with our son. And today we have 15 kids in our program but we have a whole lot more that we want to get out there and reach. And one of the things that we're, we're believing for in the future is to have a building that's dedicated to autistic therapy and to, to helping these kids with their specific needs. A building that is large enough to encompass more than just the 15 that we have now. And we believe that all of these things are going to be possible. A lot of people ask us how we could do this. Why did you do this? And the simple answer is somebody had to. Um, one of the great opportunities about being here also and having Jackson go to school here is that as parents we get to meet in groups and plan certain events and we get to get together and kind of have a meeting of the minds to figure out how every parent that deals with this, how they get to figure out certain things in our lives um, from the simplest things as going to the doctor, you know, who, who does everybody use because that can be a very scary event for our kids. and. Um, to going to Disneyland or Disney World and trying to figure out how you orchestrate a trip to Disney World with a child who may not like a lot of people in his space. Um, so for us this year, it's been really nice because we've been able to get together with 
I've been able to get together with other moms and we planned a trip to Disney World and things that I didn't even think about. They offered that information and it's been a really good opportunity to have some camaraderie ship around people who really understand what it's like to have a child with autism. One of the difficulties in, in dealing with autism is that not every child is the same. A lot of people assume that they're all from uh, the movie Rain Man and that all these children have some special gift and everything else is just sort of weird. Uh, but it's really not the case. Um, all of these children are different. They all may have some similarities, but they have an unusual amount of other difficulties that other children may not have, even other autistic children. For that reason, when a child first comes to us, we're uh, forced to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with that child. We have a, a separate tier for that, uh, the beginning child when they first come so that they're actually getting one-on-one -on -one, uh, therapy with a, a teacher for as long as they need it. And that's pretty unique for any school these days to have that sort of uh, teacher-student ratio. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of the kids have similarities, but their differences are what have caused us to create a program that is, that is tailored to their individual needs and they get that through a very low teacher-student ratio. Yeah, for Ava, she, she needed to have that ratio, that one-on-one, -on -one because of the level where she's at. She's uh, nonverbal and when she first came, she was not potty trained, not feeding herself, um, not doing a lot of very simple things that a child at a younger age is normally doing and she's six. So just in a short amount of time of being here, she's been able to achieve those things and get potty trained and feeding herself and those simple things, but things that for a parent is very time consuming, you know, every day, all day, one, you know, one time after the other. And it's made a huge difference in our lives just to have those simple things that most parents normally have at the age of two or three now happened at the age of six so we've already we've just begun but we've already come a long way in our eyes um you know it's been so fun to we our family all lives in a different part of the country and we're a military family so my kids only get to see their grandparents and aunts and uncles every six months or so so it's been it's been really exciting to let them see the progress of Jackson in the last year uh, one of the things that we just did recently is we got to do a video conference, conference with our family and Skype with them and we were having the kids do all kinds of stuff because they are all in that location and we're the only ones that are out here so we let both of our children have some time on the video camera and um, we asked Jackson to do the pledge and both my husband and I assumed that he would be doing the Pledge of Allegiance and so We've heard him say that a bunch of times, so my husband asked him to say it, and he actually did the Pledge to the Holy Bible, and it was a total surprise to me. I had no idea that he even knew the Pledge to the Bible. It was a shock to my mom, and she could see that it was a shock to me, and um, now we have him do it all the time just because we enjoy watching him say it, but it's been, it's been really fun to have family see the progress that he has made in the last year and to see the academic progress that he has made because somebody actually took the effort to show him how it was to be done. He has the tools to do it. And, and really the, the difference in what we're trying to accomplish and what other programs do is we believe that every one of these children deserve high expectations. We believe that they deserve to, to have expectations placed on them because that's the only way we all grow, that's the only way we all get better. And so the difference between our program and a lot of others is in a lot of other educational environments, they're about making sure that every child gets the minimum. But we've set our program up to make sure that every child gets the maximum. The Educational Center for Autism is an active living intersection where faith and science meet. There is no other place like it. Initially, ECA was meant to be a place of healing for children with autism. Come to find out, God had much bigger plans than we did. Before God gave me insight on autism or applied behavior analysis, He first taught me what real love is through a little boy named Ethan. Throughout Ethan's journey, we were forced to compare treatment options that would help Ethan overcome this tragic disorder called autism. ABA had all of the criteria we were looking for. Most importantly, it's based on positive reinforcement, meaning that we teach kids the game you do my something, you get your something, and we use things that are highly motivating to reinforce good behaviors. Everything in ABA is research-based, meaning that someone else has already proven these methods and techniques 
effective. Now we just have to apply them. ABA is full of high expectations for each child. We provide the maximum in education. And most importantly for me, is the humane treatment of problematic behaviors. God lets us know in Hebrews 12, 1, throw everything that weighs you down and run with perseverance the race that God has given you. The Educational Center for Autism is a place where kids can throw down the autistic behaviors that weigh them down. It's a place where they learn the meaning of perseverance and determination. We pray for and foster courage and bravery that each child will need to run their race in life. Your challenge today is to take off your autism goggles and throw them down. Look at each kid for who they are. They are Nina, they are Ethan, they are Ella, they are Parker, they are Hayden, they are Braxton, they are Jesse, they are Ava. To find out how you can support the Educational Center for Autism, go to sccife.org.